Hey, grade two friends. Today, we're going to talk about the element of art called texture. And as you see here, we have the six elements of art, color, line, shape, value or tone, texture, and volume or form. Color, we know paintings to have color. We know about primary and secondary colors. Lines, any kind of drawing you make, you use lines. Shapes, shapes we have geometric shapes like triangles and ovals and squares or organic shapes like shapes we find in nature like the shape of clouds or leaves. Value or tone is the lightness or darkness of a color. So if you add white to a color, it makes it lighter. And if you add black, it makes it darker. Texture is the one we're going to talk about today. Lots of things have texture. If you notice, this butterfly here contains a lot of texture. And then finally, volume or form. Whenever we do sculptures, things that take up space, objects, they have volume or form. So texture is the way a surface or object feels to the touch or how it may look. So looking at this wall here, how would you describe its texture? Bumpy? Rough? Definitely hard? Yep, those are all great words to describe its texture. We use texture in art all the time especially visual texture, which is how something looks like it feels. So we, to draw, when we're drawing something, we can draw in the bumps on the turtle shell or the little upside down V shapes on this hedgehog to show that it's spiky. Or we could draw tiny little lines or ovals on our snake to show that the snake is scaly. This makes your drawing look much more realistic if you add those descriptive lines in your drawings for visual texture. Actual texture is actually how something feels if you actually touched it. But visual texture is how something looks. So when you're drawing an object, you wanna add visual texture. Paintings and sculptures have texture. All of these works of art have actual texture. So if we actually came up close to this painting, which is Starry Night by Vincent Van Gogh, we're going to be studying this painting this school year, the texture would be bumpy. And you can see Van, the artist Vincent Van Gogh used a lot of thick paint. So if you looked at it up close, it would have kind of a bumpy texture. Same with this painting. You could see the flowers are raised up and swirls of bumpy paint. This is a sculpture made up of pencil tips, pencil points. And we know that that would feel spiky, prickly. Yeah, don't want to go up close to that sculpture. It kind of looks like a pork, would remind me of feeling a porcupine, right? And then this elephant, I don't know if it's made out of stone or clay, but it looks like it would definitely have a bumpy texture. So if you see in works of art, you can use actual texture, like when you're making sculptures or paintings, or drawing in visual texture. And that's what we're gonna do for our drawing activity today. Here are some more examples of visual texture. So just by looking at these lines, what do you think these top three are the texture of? If you guessed wood, you are right. And how about this second row? Waves, right? All different kind of textures of water to show the water moving. So these wavy lines kind of show the movement of the water. And then finally, all kinds of rough textures of bricks. So adding all kinds of lines to make the bricks look more realistic and look roughed if we could actually touch them. How would we draw the texture of a fish? Well, I think we would just draw some lines for scales, right? To show that the fish is scaly, maybe a little slimy. And then I would draw some lines on the fins. 
the lines close together to show that the fins are very thin and the texture is not so much like scaly here, but that the fins are a little bit, oh, I don't know. How would you describe the fins? I think it would be, they'd be feel very, very thin and kind of fluttery. The fins kind of flutter. So I would put lines here and maybe some lines here for texture. A castle. Well, let me switch to gray here. Well, you can do bricks that are more rectangular or square shape, or you know those old castles, ancient castles, sometimes have round bricks to show the texture. All kinds of, and then you could do little lines on them as well to show kind of cracks in the brick. A cat. But what's the texture of a cat? Furry. So you could draw little lines close together for the hair of the cat or its fur. You would do larger lines if the cat had longer hair, longer fur. You want to keep the lines a li little bit of space between the lines to, to draw the texture of fur. Because if you just colored in your lines, you wouldn't really see that the cat has little lines for fur. It would just be kind of a solid color. You could do that if the cat was very, very smooth. But if the cat's very kind of has fur that sticks out a little bit, I like to add these little lines kind of close together. Texture of trees. Well, as we saw in the other example, you could draw lines for bark. Oops, I went a little outside the line here. Oh, well. And then for the needles, the pine needles, you can draw little lines for pine needles. So for our activity today, you're going to use all different kind of textures um, to do your amazing creative work of art. All right. All right, kiddos. See you soon. Bye.